Hey, this is Mike Fatambas, and uh, this video is going to show you everything you need to know about the uh, Leprechaun, Coachman Leprechaun 30 foot RV, where we store everything, how to use everything. So let's get started. This is where storage is under those pillows. There's a long storage um, compartment under there uh, that you can put stuff in. And there's three cabinets over the uh, couch that are available for storage. There's three more that are over the table. Two of them are used for um, hand towels and bath towels, and the other one is available for storage. There are storage underneath the couch where the extra um, sheets are kept. Then there's storage under both of these where we've got some cooking utensils and some paper towels and a few other things. Then over on this side, up top, that's where we have the um, the dishes, uh, pots and pans, I'm sorry, not pots and pans, dishes, cups, a um, variety of different things like that. Underneath, that's where the hot mats are um, and a couple other things. The bottom one has the trash can, one large pot, and uh, uh, dishwashing soap and extra sponges. This one, uh, the bottom one, has... Um, uh, has the drying towels and there's room for personal storage. The top one has silverware. The bottom one here has uh, sharp knives. This one has cooking utensils. The next one up has, um, I'm sorry, the bottom one has like pots and pans. The top one has cooking utensils. Oh, you can open the TV and you can place your DVDs um, there. In the bathroom, there's storage up top. And then the cabinet here is mostly uh, storage. The bottom one has the washcloths, um, suntan lotion, bug spray, um, bandages. There's some storage there. And the toilet paper is down underneath the sink. Then in the back, there's storage on the left side, there's storage above, there's storage on the right side. Um, part of that storage on the left side has extra blankets and stuff. Um, and if you don't find them there, then we've moved them to underneath the couch. So this uh, one up here is available for storage and this uh, bottom one is available for storage. Okay, I want to do a quick one on lights. So there's one, the ceiling lights, porch light, which is the outside light. Trunk lights are for underneath. Once they are turned off, there's a number of manual lights that can be turned on individually. That, that one over the bed, each of these. There's uh, the lights for the hallway are like right here. Lights for the bathroom are inside, the lights for the shower are right there. The lights for the bathroom are actually under the towel holder, so if there's a towel there, you kind of have to reach under there. The lights for uh, the bedroom are right inside the door, right there. The other two lights flip on manually, and that's it for lighting. Okay, this video covers the control panel and the generator. So there's a little test that shows how everything's looking um, for your... LP gas, which will be full when you get it, the fresh water, the holding, and the gray water, and your battery level. So the uh, um, the fresh water and the holding on an RV, if you're not hooked up to city water and sewer, you want to use your water very conservatively. When you're taking a shower, turn it off. When you're not actually doing something, when you're washing dishes, don't let the water run. Um, anything will end up using up all your available water and filling up the gray water. So we can go like three or four days for about five of us if we're conservative and about one day if we waste water. So the next thing is there's a little button for the heater. When you want to turn the heater on, we usually leave it off when we're not using it. But you just flip it on, it starts red, it should turn green, and then you have heat. So... The next thing 
this little pump here, I usually leave it on, but um, when you're running in the city water or hooking up to public water, you'll want to turn that pump off. But the rest of the time you want to leave it on. That allows the water to like uh, to come out of the spigots and everything. The last thing is the generator. Um, so don't turn it on if you're hooked up to electricity. But if you're not hooked up to electricity, you just press the start button, wait for it to fire up. It'll turn on. It'll allow you to run your microwave and your air conditioning while either at break or going down the road. If it's getting too hot in the back for people, you can flip this on and then you can come over here and turn your uh, air conditioning on, which is really simple. Just flip it to cool and put it to the temperature that you want it. Okay, this video covers how to light the stove. The stove's a gas stove, but it doesn't have automatic ignition. So for the stove and the oven, you basically turn it to the on position and then there's a lighter under the sink okay, and you light it until it starts and the oven is the same way so you turn the oven to pilot, or actually you can turn it all the way to on, but something along that line. And then start the flame. It's way, it's going to be hard to see it, but it's underneath. And if you can see that, there's a little blue flame that'll start and then it will fire up. So when you turn it off, it'll go off. So this video shows how to extend and retract the uh, outside step. So it's really simple. There's a little button over here on the side. Just press it in, rolls it up, press it out, comes back down. This other little button here I want to talk about. That red light should always be on. If for some reason your power, you have no power to anything, then somebody's accidentally pressed this button. And so when it turns off there, it shuts off everything except for the engine. So here's how to turn the, the uh, table into a bed. You pull the cushions up, and then you lift the table up. There's a release underneath for the leg. Pull it up, put your knee underneath it. It drops down, and then the cushions just go back. And put the bedding on it and when you're ready to put it back up you just put the cushions away out of the way lift the table back up make sure they go into the two slots and then press that button and flip the leg down and that's it hey this is how to turn the couch into a bed so it's really simple you just lift up here pull it out flatten it out put the sheets and covers on and to put it back you just lift it up and push and that is it. How to lower the jacks. So for this, you'll actually need the car in park, the keys into the accessory position, and then over by the steps is a control panel. You press the on button, and then you'll press the down buttons. There's one button to go up when you're ready to store it right here. But for down, you got to hit every single one. So press it until it hits. Press the other side. Until they hit. And then there's a level. You can kind of tell by opening one of the doors and letting it see but you'll go till it's level, um, and then you press the off button. And then to reverse it, you have to stick the key in the ignition again, press the on button, press the store button. Okay. 
and once they're up you can press the off button you want to look underneath the RV um, the ones that are on this one actually flip up and down so you want to make sure that they are all they flipped up sometimes you'll be in the sand or something and they may not come up so you can kind of see that one's up I can see on the other side it's up, up. Up in the front, they're a little lower, but they are right behind the tire, and you'll see them if they're down. They're all up here. And that is it. Um, first, the RV is 30 feet long, so it's obviously longer than your car. It is uh, eight feet wide, so it's wider than your car, and it is heavier, so it takes longer to accelerate longer to slow down. The side mirrors are actually uh, better than most cars unless they're electronic with a little video display. So you can see there's not really a blind spot like uh, like on a car. Um, let's see, a couple things that uh, to know is one, I uh, usually try to keep it under 70 depending on wind conditions. This thing is so tall that if you're driving in strong winds it can definitely like push the RV around. Um, second, when you're um, leave extra space for driving um, and extra space when you're accelerating onto a lane. When you're going down a hill, um, don't use the brakes the entire time. Shift into second. Um, that will uh, keep the brakes working. And uh, let's see, if you're backing up, there's no backups on this, camp, on this uh, RV. So you'll need to like get somebody to help guide you when you're pulling in uh, behind. I'm going to cover a couple things on the dash. Um, there's a spot for the jacks. If that light is on, don't drive it. Um, if the step light is on, don't drive it. Put the step up before driving. If for some reason it doesn't start, there's an emergency start button that you can use and it'll jump to the batteries, the spare batteries that are used to for the RV. Here's how to, o to open the awning. There's two releases at each end. You lift those up. And then there's a little switch up at the top, this handle is behind the uh, driver's and passenger seat. You flip it down, and then you hook it up right here, and pull. And it pulls out. To reverse it and put it up, you do the same thing. Hold this so it doesn't take off. Flip this handle toward the RV. Hold on a second. Make sure it's good. Then we gotta hold on this. There it goes. Flip it toward the RV and slide this back over to the middle. Make sure those two. Um, Clamps are sole out. Hook it here just so it doesn't go crazy, but you have to let it up a little bit right here. And then hook these back up and you're good to go. In this part of the video, we'll cover what's on the outside. So, in the bottom storage unit uh, door, there has a propane, um, gas grill, the um, and the supplies has a table, two tablecloths and some cooking uh, utensils that could be used outside. And uh, the one above it is for the um, TV, I'm sorry, the radio, you can plug it in there. This is the connection for the propane, you won't have to worry about that. The next one is uh, storage, there's room for you to put your own personal stuff. There's four or six chairs back there. There's the cover that goes over the front windshield of the RV. There is um, the lights that you can clip on around the awning. 
on the back side this one actually goes all the way through um, there's the umbrellas and room for storage and a toolbox let's see oh and some towels in case you just uh, get something dirty and need to clean it next one that we've already covered or will cover in the video is where the outside shower is and the um, and the lines to empty the uh, black and gray water. I don't think I mentioned it before, but inside in the control panel, when you click the test button, it shows um, how full the black and gray water is and how low you are on your uh, water. So depending on um, you know how much you use the water, you'll have to empty it every uh, day or two. If you're conservative, you can make it three. Um, when you're off the uh, grid and not using water, use water very conservatively. I think there's 65 gallons in here. Um, and so if you're taking a shower, turn it off when you're not using it. If you're washing, don't leave the water running. You will fill up the, you'll run out of water and you use up the gray water uh, tanks uh, quickly. Underneath, in the front, see in this storage unit um, which is the second from the front on the driver's side there are two more chairs um, large ones and there is a, a large fold-out table on the front one up here is a uh, green um, um, cl not cloth but that's the word I'm going to use they can be thrown out in uh, in front of the uh, awning um, to keep from tracking stuff inside and I think that is it for the outside storage Okay, this is how to hook up the uh, sewer system to dump the drain. So the first thing is underneath There is a pipe that slides out this thing unscrews from the end and Then the pipe the hose that's here will extend out you can be a couple feet from your drain, but you can't be like very far. There's a connection piece if you're gonna leave it hooked up permanently that you hook on this one end here goes to the uh, pipe and this other end goes into the, uh, to the uh, RV spot in the campground. And then you pull the black water, which is the larger one over here pull it out, open it up. When it's drained, then you pull the gray water, which is the smaller one over here, let it drain. There are gloves over here that you can use. And when you're done, close them all up, pull, pull this back up, stick it back in here and slide it back out of the way. And that's it. The only other thing in here is the uh, shower. Well, the outside shower. So it basically is just a little uh, hose and you can turn it on. There's a, I thought there's a on off. I believe it's an on off button. But anyway, you can control it by uh, turning it on and off by the uh, the nozzles there. And it allows you just like if you're at the beach or something and you want to uh, knock some sand off before you go into the uh, RV. So that's it.